Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Sharon Moore, this Michigan program already sounding to be quite active in the transfer portal heading into this offseason. Former Indiana wide receiver Donovan McCauley already scheduling a visit for Michigan at the end of the month against Michigan State. This is a name that is familiar to Michigan fans going back to last offseason, a top target for Michigan at the wide receiver position. Uh, you look at Donovan McCauley. We kind of said this last offseason. I'll say it again. I think this is the perfect fit. This is the ideal wide receiver that Michigan needs out on the boundary heading into 2025. Now, we went after Donovan McCauley last year, decides to stay at Indiana, obviously didn't work out with that new head coaching staff, decides to redshirt, hit the transfer portal again. I would expect this to be a massive target for Michigan in the transfer portal. Now, I want to talk about Donovan McCauley, but I also want to get into the conversation of, yeah, for Michigan fans, it's been a frustrating 2024 season. There is clear work that needs to be done to this Michigan roster in the transfer portal. Let's talk about Donovan McCauley, but let's also talk about some other positions and some potential targets that Michigan might go after in the transfer portal over the next couple of weeks and months. Fired up to get into this one. Now, before we do, and as always, to the Michigan fans that we're going to have a lot of conversations just like these for the next couple of weeks and months. The amount of support the Michigan fans have continued to show to the boys as a Michigan fan myself. It's been a frustrating 2024 season. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. But I think much more importantly, let it fly in the comment section. Some positions, some names that you think Michigan might be going after in the transfer portal. Because again, this is a conversation that we're going to have a lot over the next couple of weeks and months. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. And without further ado, let's get into this one. Let's start with Donovan McCauley. And at least in my opinion, I think a lot of Michigan fans' opinions, this is the exact wide receiver that we need in this offense in 2025. And, you know, the national media will talk about the quarterback problem that Michigan has in it. There's no secret. There's a quarterback problem. We've gone through three quarterbacks to start the 2024 season but I think a lot of Michigan fans who watch this team and follow this team relatively closely know that there's also a problem in the wide receiver room. Like th there's not really many difference makers that you see what wide receiver on Michigan's roster right now is injecting fear into the opposing defense. I think for lack of better terms, the answer is not many. And you look at where this Michigan passing attack has gone through. It's gone through the tight end position, you know, Colson Loveland, who is, in my opinion, the best tight end in the country. But if you're Michigan looking at what you want this offense to look at, look like in 2025, you, you need better wide receivers. You go back to JJ McCarthy in that 2023 offense. It, yeah. Colson Loveland was an absolute guy for Michigan, but you also had Roman Wilson, Cornelius Johnson, guys that are now playing in the NFL. The amount of talent that Michigan has in the wide receiver room, it's just not good enough right now. And I would expect Michigan to hammer the transfer portal for these type of players. And I think specifically these bigger bodied boundary wide receivers that can work vertically down the field. And that's exactly what Donovan McCauley is. You look at the, the track record or storyline of Donovan McCauley and say he was recruited as a quarterback out of high school, actually started some games as a true freshman at quarterback for Indiana in 2021 makes the transition to wide receiver in 2023 had a phenomenal year. And I think a lot of Michigan fans remember Indiana Donovan McCauley. This is a very good wide receiver. 2023, 48 catches, 650 yards, six touchdowns, excels in contested catch situations and excels in the red zone. I mean, how many wide receivers on Michigan's roster right now do we trust to go up and make a play on 50-50 balls? I don't think there's any. And so Donovan McCauley can be that dude for Michigan. If there was a wide receiver one target for Michigan in the transfer portal, as we speak right now, I think Donovan McCauley is by far the biggest need that Michigan has. Now, a couple other wide receivers that I think should at least be talked about in this conversation, because I don't think we're just taking Donovan McCauley. You know, I, mean, I think Michigan's going to be going after a lot of wide receivers in the portal. Caleb Brown is another intriguing name. Now, this is just another name that's in the transfer portal right now. We expect the uh, the amount of names at the wide receiver position to fill up over the next couple of weeks and months. You look at Caleb Brown and say, probably not the kind of wide receiver that would be number one on the list for Michigan. You look at Caleb Brown, a guy that we went after hard at the high school ranks. I mean, former top 100 national prospect. We know this kid 
has some real juice athletically, primarily played running back at the high school ranks, goes to Ohio State, doesn't really work out with how loaded that wide receiver room is, goes to Iowa, which, I mean, I don't know if you're a wide receiver, I don't know why you're going to Iowa, but that's where he went. Had over 200 yards for Iowa in 2023, kind of emerged as that wide receiver one towards the end of 2023 for Iowa. Hits the transfer portal once again. This is more of a slot wide receiver a guy that you want to get the football into his hands and kind of let him do the rest, which, you know, you have some of these guys on our roster, guys like Samaj Morgan, but Caleb Brown kind of built like a running back, probably a little bit more suited to be a guy that you're trying to feature in the short intermediate route tree. He's got really good short area quickness going back to his high school film. I would be surprised if this is the top target for Michigan because I think the kind of wide receiver we want to go after is probably closer to the Donovan McCauley than it is Caleb Brown. But this is just another difference maker that Michigan could add into this wide receiver room where if you're Sharon Moore, Ron Bellamy, you have to make sure you have depth and competition in this wide receiver room because there's just there's not enough of that for Michigan right now. There's just not a ton of talent in this wide receiver room. And if you want this offense, to look different in 2025. Not only do you have to get the quarterback position, right, which we're about to talk about, but you want to make sure that there are playmakers around the quarterback. And as we stand right now, I don't think there's a ton of optimism that there's going to be a ton of talent in that Michigan wide receiver in 2025. I think there, there needs to be a lot of work in the transfer portal that needs to be done. Now, moving over to the quarterback conversation, we're not really sure what the quarterback market's going to look like. I think we're all pretty sure that Jackson Arnold is probably going to be in that market. He's probably going to be one of the more sought after quarterbacks. And you look at Jackson Arnold and say, yeah, you can say he was not great as a starter at Oklahoma early in this 2024 season, obviously got benched from Michael Hawkins. I, I look at Jackson Arnold and say, this kid is so much more talented than what he showed. You look at the struggles Oklahoma's offense had very similar conversation in Michigan where The Oklahoma offensive line has been a disaster. They've been extremely banged up at the wide receiver room. Jackson Arnold in the SEC didn't really have a chance to have a ton of success. Now, I'm not going to get up here and say he played really good football and it's all the wide receiver and offensive line's fault. But I am going to say I think Jackson Arnold is a guy that I would bet on in 2025 if you can put some weapons around him. Now, Jackson Arnold, is he? he's probably going to be one of the more coveted quarterbacks that's going to be in the transfer portal market. Not sure if Michigan's going to go after him. And quite frankly, the conversation I think you have to have if you're Michigan is what kind of quarterback do you want? The first conversation is what does Jaden Davis look like throughout the rest of 2024 in practice? Like, do we have a lot of confidence that Jaden Davis is going to be the guy in 2025? Which I, it sounds like there's a lot of confidence that that may be the answer. But you look at what the quarterback room might look like and say, all right, you have. Carter Smith coming in as a freshman, probably not going to be a guy that you want to rely on to start at 2025. Don't you want another quarterback, a quarterback that has played at the power four level to also be in that quarterback room? Because you look at what this quarterback room might look like in 2025, say, you know, Alex Orge is just not a feasible option. We kind of know what Davis Warren is. Jack Tuttle is out of eligibility after this year the Michigan quarterback room is going to have a lot of, a lot of seats open at the table. And so if you're Michigan, yeah, you might have a ton of confidence in Jaden Davis, but you also probably want to bring in another quarterback. Now the quarterbacks that I kind of lean to are more veteran quarterbacks, one year rental quarterbacks. I think an interesting name, and I'm not necessarily sure if I'm going to bang the table for it, but Mass Luca kind of how you want. uh, I think the first question is how do you want this Michigan offense to look in 2025? If it's still run heavy, Mass Luca could be an op an option that can win you a lot of games. Now you look at Matt Luke and say a 43.8% completion percentage. That's not very good. The thing with Matt Luke is if you just look at the box score, you think that's bad, but you kind of turn on some of the UNLV film and say, they just throw the football down the field. Like Matt Luke was never going to be a 70% completion percentage kind of guy. And at the end of the day, he uh, elite, elite legs. Uh, they ask him to push the ball down the field. So the completion percentage isn't great. I don't think Matt Luke is, an elite pocket passer, but he is kind of that gamer at the quarterback position that you can use in a lot of different ways. If Michigan's offense looks similar to what it looks like right now, which I think a lot of Michigan fans hope it doesn't, 
Nas Luka could certainly be an option. Now, I think the last like kind of intriguing name, at least for me, is all right, Jaden Davis, what if he needs one more year? Then you get Brady Harden, a one-year rental that I think could be quite intriguing for Michigan is Utah quarterback Cam Rising, who sounds like he might medically redshirt again. And so he'll be an eighth-year senior quarterback that might hit the transfer portal market. I, I would be surprised if he just comes back for Utah for another year. Like if you're Michigan, you say, all right, Jaden Davis needs one more year to develop. We want a quarterback that we can win a lot of football games with. Cam Rising might be your answer. And so it allows you to want to get Jaden Davis a little bit more experience, get his feet wet, bring in a veteran quarterback that Jaden Davis can learn from and have Jaden Davis ready to go in 2026. I, I think Cam Rising could be an interesting conversation having this is the kind of quarterback that I would lean to not necessarily Cam Rising himself but an experienced quarterback that might not necessarily be a Heisman Trophy caliber quarterback but a quarterback that we know there's a large sample size that he can win football games and so Cam Rising I think would be a really intriguing conversation to have now you go over to the defensive side of the football I think there's work to be done on this side of the roster too specifically on the inside of the defensive line where depth is already a problem I would predict that Mason Graham and Kenny Grant go to the NFL draft. What's the interior defensive line rotation look like heading into 2025? You might have Rayshon Benny back for his redshirt senior year. That's a good start, but you probably want some more bodies on the inside of the defensive line. Jaheim Otis, former top 100 national prospect, big, big body that I thought was really good in 2023 and kind of surprised he didn't play a ton for Alabama this year. He hits the transfer portal. I think that Michigan should be going after at least a couple bodies on the inside of the defensive line. If, in fact, we lose Mason Graham and Kenneth Graham, which I think we will, we're going to need a few bodies on the inside of the defensive line. Jaheim Otis certainly could be in that conversation. Now, I think the the picture is going to be a little bit more clear as we know what Michigan players are moving on to the NFL draft, what Michigan players are hitting the transfer portal. But I look at the inside of the defensive line and say that's a position – that probably needs to be addressed. I look at the boundary cornerback position and say, Will Johnson probably going to the NFL. I look at Amir Hall losing eligibility. Uh, you have Jair Hill that you feel pretty good about. Outside of that, it, that's probably a question. You know, Notre Dame cornerback Jaden Mickey, who's played over 500 snaps, he's in the transfer portal. Maybe someone like him. There's going to be a couple different positions that Michigan should be going after. I think most notably quarterback and wide receiver I would love for you guys to let it fly in the comment section. Like what guys should we be talking about over the next couple of weeks and months that, you know, Michigan might be going after. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. Again, if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Going to be a conversation we have a lot of over the next couple of weeks and months. Appreciate you guys. And we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.